Watch watches Oklahoma City metro area, more specifically Norman, Newcastle, and the south side of Moore. Indeed, I do want to point out, though, that up in northern Kansas, a uh, pretty strong rotation heading toward the Bellevue and the Republic can, uh, areas of Kansas. So dangerous situation in there. There's been a lot of tornadoes reported in northern central parts of Kansas. Taking a look here, very strong rotation now has formed. It's intensifying uh, as in the area of that new hook that has formed down to the uh, south and east of the Newcastle area. And that is going to, this is Norman area. I've driven on Robinson Street. This is very familiar turf. Uh, Robinson Street heading over toward uh, uh, North Flood Ab Avenue. Uh, this uh, is a dangerous situation for Norman with a very strong rotation. Show us again, Sarah, the rotation, if you could, on that one. Uh, the, uh, the very well-defined circulation is intensified dramatically mm -hmm. just in the time since we last talked to you and is heading uh, over toward West Robinson Street, North Flood Street. Then we'll be heading over toward uh, the North Porter Avenue. So very, very dangerous uh, storm. Right, and you know, it, it's the time of day where people are going to be leaving their offices, uh, heading home between 5 and 6, the local time. Uh, so you would say stay in that building, stay in that secure shelter. You don't want to find yourself out there on I-35 in the next few minutes. Absolutely. Uh, the south side of, uh, well, the, the downtown Norman as well as the west side of Norman uh, and definitely coming across I-35, not very far from the Robinson Street exit, is going to uh, have the possibility of a strong tornado coming across uh, this area. Uh, it definitely has, uh, there's, the, there's the rotation. It is very strong, and there it's going to be coming toward that Robinson Street exit uh, and coming right into uh, Norman uh, as the situation looks like. And it's also a situation that could be rain-wrapped, a very difficult situation. We've been looking at that. The uh, do uh, do believe that we're getting uh, debris signatures mm -hmm. with this particular storm. So a dangerous situation. Sarah, can you uh, go up to the Gibson Ridge and let me uh, uh, yeah. have a look at that particular the high definition radar here? And so uh, here's the situation that we're looking at. Well defined circulation. A lot of big hail that's up in here north of Newcastle. That could be coming very well up in toward the Moore area. But the rotation is down in that hook that you see. Extremely tight rotation mm -hmm. right there. That's a tornado vortex signature. Let's see if we have debris signatures associated with that. Uh, not extremely well co-located at this point, but a dangerous situation heading toward the uh, Moore, I Norman area. The I, 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 Jim Cantore just texted me. I, he thinks that's the whole tornado that we're looking at. If we take that screen full right there, it's, it's very hard to see. The contrast is not great, but it, it almost looks like the, there for a second when the lightning illuminated it, that that's that kind of lighter area that you see there, maybe a whole yeah, I think that, cone there. That light area there just above where we're saying uh, the CY and the south words uh, may very well be the tornado that's uh, partly wrapped in rain, making it very difficult to see. Uh, indeed, that could very well be the case. And Dr. Forbes, I got word that we are getting reports in from the Bridge Creek area of some damage. So from the, perhaps that first rotation where we saw that storm make that left turn, uh, the local affiliates are reporting some damage yeah, there. Yeah, it was definitely a tornado debris signature mm -hmm. over in parts of that debris, uh, Bridge Creek area. So uh, definitely dangerous okay. situation. The storm that had been heading toward Moore has weakened. The storm that's heading toward Norman has intensified. All right, all students at the University of Oklahoma ordered to take cover now. If you're in Norman, take cover. We will be right back as we continue to monitor this. A tornado emergency for Norman, Oklahoma. This is the south side of the Oklahoma City metropolitan area, one of the cities being impacted by tornadic supercell thunderstorms. North of Robinson here. That's kind of where we lost it at. That's where uh, there's still a lot of heavy rain coming in there. Um, but it, it is not a complete funnel all the way to the ground, so it kind of makes it hard uh, at this altitude for us to be able to, to see exactly where it is until it starts to kind of pick up. All right, you are listening to the K4 Chopper 4 pilot, uh, John Welch. He is giving us some play-by-play uh, some -play as he looks for this storm as well.
All right, well, we're not hearing it's, from him it, right now. He's starting to talk there, but I gotta let you know, if you have students at OU, Norman, Oklahoma, home of University of Oklahoma or Oklahoma University, uh, those students have been ordered to seek shelter, get to that safe spot. If you know someone there who might not be in the dorm, might not be getting the alerts, give them a buzz and let them know that uh, very dangerous situation in play for them. Although I, I'm sure anybody at that campus is well versed in staying up to date with what's going on in the weather. Absolutely. The, the, we're one of the places that the, the weather information gets out. You can get us on your cell phone also. Uh, any kind of uh, communication device, we're mm -hmm. available. Check out weather.com for our app. And let's this is take the kind of uh, yeah, situation where it really it. comes in handy. Uh -huh. Let's take you to the University of Oklahoma right now. You are looking at the campus, and uh, luckily, no students out there walking around, which is exactly what you want to see. You hope that everybody is already in their safe spot. I, I know the, the dorms there have uh, safe places for the students to go, the dining halls, I'm sure, as well, as it is dinner time, local time, 545 uh, uh, Central Time. Now, th this is a cell that had a tornado on it, apparently, mm -hmm. and then cool, rain-cooled air from the storm mm -hmm. itself apparently squeezed that one off or didn't allow that to continue. It cut off the inflow. But now there's a new area just to the south of that. So this storm has recycled. This may be its second life. It may not be done yet. Mm -hmm. Let's go to our experts here in the lab. Dr. Greg Forbes and Mike Bettis. All right, thanks, guys, uh, very much. You look at this uh, incredibly distinct hook echo on this uh, Dr. Forbes that uh, is coming right past Newcastle, almost making a beeline for Norman now. Yeah, it really is. And in fact, there's been a amateur radio has a spotter has reported a tornado crossing the South Canadian River near West Robinson Street. So that is coming into the Norman area, the northwest side of Norman. Uh, you can see here on the right the well-defined hook echo that is redeveloped. The old uh, uh, hook has, has gone. That was the one that was headed toward Moore. This is the circulation now that's heading toward Norman. It will uh, stay south of Moore. Moore getting probably some hail coming toward you from the body of this well-defined supercell thunderstorm now that spirals all the way down to the southwest flank here. There's the Canadian River. So he just crossed the Canadian River coming right toward Norman inside that little hook appendage that we see uh, on radar. Okay, we've got a different vantage point here, Dr. Forbes, from the ground from K4. Oh, we might have some damage here. This is uh, Rich C Bridge Creek. Oh, okay, so I see. Yeah, earlier we had the tornado came across the Bridge Oof. Creek area. There was rotation in the storm about 100 miles per hour I was seeing on the radar when we were in the Bridge Creek area. All right, so we know that we've had some damage w with the storm, and uh, what do you tell the folks that live in Norman right now? Well, you need to be seeking shelter, lowest innermost portion of a sturdy building, and try to protect your head. Put a helmet on if you have it. Uh, put your shoes on in case you have damage uh, that you uh, need to come out into the rubble. You don't cut your feet all up. That's the, the best uh, I can say. At this point, now I was mentioning when it was back near the Bridge Creek area, I was seeing a 100-mile-per-hour rotation. At this point, I'm seeing a lot less rotation. I'm seeing rotation here that is uh, showing up. Well, it's increased a little bit. I'm seeing up now to about 70 miles per hour. Just five minutes ago, it was down to about 30. So we've seen in the last five minutes some strengthening of this circulation as it works its way across from the Canadian River uh, now into the west side of Norman. So you can see on the left-hand side of your screen there a distinctive uh, rotating wall cloud base, and then underneath that we're getting you know, likely huge rain shaft and hail shaft potentially in there, Dr. Forbes. So we, you know, the, the tornado may be obscured by that rain. We, we can't get a visual from this vantage point. Yeah, I'm certainly, I'm feeling pretty sure that it is wrapped in rain uh, because we're seeing the tornado circulation that's about that wide uh, from about here to here on my pointer. But the rain ball that's with this is uh, uh, several miles wide. So uh, it's hiding in there. Uh, at times, at least, a tornado that is, uh, that is uh, hiding within that. So this is uh, likely going to come right across I-35. Uh, we've seen this time and time again, Dr. Forbes, between the Norman and Moore areas. You know, when we had the storm that came through Moore, came right over I-35. But as we time this out, Norman, 6.04. So we're talking about 20 minutes or less, and that storm is on top of you. So you need to be taking the storm very seriously. It's had a history of producing some damage, and you've got to get to the lowest level. If you've got a tornado shelter, go to it right now. I know a lot of folks that have them here, uh, 
sometimes a little leery going in there, Dr. Forbes. They've got issues with spiders and black widow spiders, and uh, the kids don't often like to go down in there, but it could save your life in this instance. Yeah, if you've been watching us, you might notice now that that time is later than what we had earlier projected. The storm at, at one point was moving about 25 miles per hour. It slowed down now to only about 10 miles per hour. So as a consequence, uh, the time of arrival for downtown Norman is as uh, delayed by about uh, 10 or 15 minutes prior to what we had said maybe a half hour or 40 minutes ago. And when we think about, uh, you know, when I think about Norman, I think about uh, the communities they have there. A lot of concentration of homes, and you know, you've got a campus there, so you've got dorms, uh, so a lot of people there, tens of thousands of people at the campus, and uh, if this goes somewhere near OU campus, this is going to be tough. Yeah, really tough, and of course, that is where the Storm Prediction Center, the local office of the National Weather Service, and other research laboratories are, are there right uh, on the University of Oklahoma campus. There's also research Doppler radars that are there, and so they are going to get a look very firsthand at the details of this very complicated rain wrap tornado or rain wrap type circulation with a potential tornado that's working its way now right toward Robinson Drive that will come toward uh, I-35 probably close to and maybe just slightly north of the Robinson Street uh, exit and then across uh, across Norman at the direction that it's going so there you're seeing some of the it uh, continues to look as if it will be coming up toward uh, I-35, just near Robinson Street, West Robinson Street, and then her head uh, up toward the Flood Ave in Avenue area. Uh, and uh, so we're looking at the live uh, chopper cam video right now. It's still very hard to figure out if there is a uh, tornado within that or not. It looks like they're pointing in the exact direction they need to be, but uh, the tornado... The tornado could actually be back in behind that rain curtain. Uh, John Welch is uh, is at the uh, is at the stick here on the chopper. Let's uh, let's take a listen to what he has to say. Yeah, he may be in communication with uh, K4 station uh, right now. But uh, when he comes back on, we'll uh, we'll dip in and then hear what he has to say. He's also got some uh, excellent analysis. He's been on it. Uh, all day long, Dark Forbes, even predicting when the storm would cycle and, and where it would produce a tornado. So they've got a lot of experience here. You have to when you're actually up there flying around a tornadic yeah, Mike, storm. We've got a uh, uh, brief touchdown uh, reported now by a storm chaser at the intersection of 48th and Robinson in Norman. 48th and Robinson. This may come actually very close to campus, maybe just slightly north of campus. Uh, we're going to label it for you. Uh, Jenkins Avenue, by the way, is where, if, if we can show our, uh, if we show our radar here, Jenkins Avenue, by the way, is where the the National the Weather Center is, that we and that's shooting, right kind of at the uh, south edge of campus of the uh, University of Oklahoma. So this uh, may indeed come very, very close to campus. Yeah, indeed, it's going to go, it looks as if it's going to go uh, north of there. I've been on Robinson Street. There is, I believe there's the Norman Airport, I believe, is on uh, Robinson Street or out in this area. So I've been on this Robinson Street many times myself. Of course, we, we make many trips to Norman because of all the meteorologists and researchers that are there. I look at the picture there on the left, Dr. Forbes. I see a lot of, uh, I see, high, it looks like that's uh, I-35 potentially there right down the middle of your screen there. I see a lot of lights on that uh, street. Uh, it looks like there are a lot of cars out this evening. And we seem and to I see have lost, some flashing from this lights. Uh, perspective, we seem to have lost the rain wrapping. So uh, we're able to see a little bit better. There seems to be just to the right of center there. Uh, some kind of a, uh, a lowering wall cloud that perhaps is putting down occasionally uh, tornadoes uh, within that or, or there seems to be right at the edge of that you can see a white line there right it, it's a very sharp it's edge the to the rain the with and, closer uh, to us like it, it a uh, you know that is not raining let's dip in and listen to uh, the chopper pilot John well yeah, you know they built all those stores there the Academy and, and other stores there uh, just on the east side of I-35 it appears it's going to track just right along there and behind the storm or behind the area we're talking about what I can see is still lights that are turned on so we haven't seen any complete blackout so you know sometimes you might miss the power no, flash but you wouldn't the miss the, the block of lights behind it and uh, all the lights have been coming on is it's getting dark. All right, so you've been listening to uh, John Welsh, the uh, chopper pilot here for K4 as the storm is coming near uh, Norman, Oklahoma. We want to uh, want to take you up to Kansas, by the way, because we have a report now of a large tornado on the ground near Republic, Kansas. This would be uh, near the Nebraska state line, Dr. Forbes, uh, north of Belleville, north of Concordia. Yeah, this is, I pointed this out maybe 10 minutes ago or so, the storm that looked to be rotating most strongly about a, a, among a number of storms that were up in that area. You can see a well-defined hook echo there. At times, there's been a debris ball associated with this. It's heading up toward an area uh, that would be taking it to, toward Chester, 
uh, in, I believe, Chester would be Nebraska. This is very close to the Nebraska border. And so, uh, Republic County, you have a tornado warning, uh, and uh, there has been a tornado spotted uh, associated with this particular storm. Uh, and uh, that uh, confirmed large and extremely dangerous tornado, according to the National Weather Service uh, statements near Republic at this point. Uh, these uh, spotters spotted a tornado five miles east of the Republic about just about nine minutes ago. So a dangerous storm south and east now, almost due east of Republic, heading toward Chester. And that warning does extend up into Nebraska. We put the tracker on this for you, and we can uh, show you exactly where this is going. Yes, Hebron is going to be uh, next in line to potentially be hit by this, coming right between Big Ben and Rose Creek, as uh, you were mentioning, Dr. Forbes, near Chester. I just want to let you know that we're following storms in Kansas on the right-hand side of your screen. A large tornado being reported here on the left-hand side of your screen. Chopper footage here out of the Oklahoma City metro area. This is south of town near Norman, where we also have reports of a tornado, a tornado that has actually done some damage. Uh, so watching two different areas at the same time for you here. Uh, zooming down in on this one, Dr. Forbes, when you see this one in, in Kansas, you see some pretty distinct tornado vortex signature. Yeah, absolutely. The blue's going northwest bound, the red's going southbound, so the tornado would be sitting right about there, uh, heading up toward uh, uh, I'll have to, uh, Fur Road is very close to Fur Road, and in this case, of course, there's always a few minutes delay, so it is probably just past Fur Road heading off very close to the uh, Nebraska border there. It's going to pass east of Byron and to the uh, west of uh, Huntley, I believe that is, uh, as it heads off toward the north and east. So very dangerous storm there that has produced a tornado. And, and you, okay, we're taking a live look here now. It looks like we may have flying debris here in uh, Norman. This is a live look right there. They may actually, oh, yeah, oh, wow. oh there went a tree. Looks went, like uh, they have, uh, they may have a tornado right on top a, of their storm chaser right yeah, there. Yeah, there was a tree, looked like a tree flew. They They're switched cameras there briefly, but uh, this, folks, is coming right through Norman, Oklahoma. We're seeing power flashes with this. This is live chopper out of Norman, Oklahoma. Tornado warning right now. This is going to come very close to the OU campus. Uh, and so if you live, you know, near Robinson Drive, Tecumseh Road, right along I-35, by the way, oh, you can see now on the right-hand side, the chaser cam on the ground, we may indeed have a tornado right there. Yeah, it's, the I, power flashes. Power flashes, I believe, I thought I saw a tree fall down. Uh, I think they just were able to drive away from it. On the north side of uh, back north climber, and it is a monster out here, Mike. Whoa, hang on, it's back. Mike. Uh, it is trying to move the car on me here. It is bad news. Yeah, you're, uh, it's really you're definitely it in it. Ground, it's going to cross I-35 at Tecumseh Road, and it's going to do so in about 15 to 20 seconds. Mark Dillard, let's just hope he's safe here, because he's actually in here about an F1, maybe a week F2. Uh, inside of it, these are this is in North Norman. It's gone through the neighborhoods in North Norman. Obviously, there is damage, and he is actually in the tornado here itself. Uh, in his storm tracking vehicle. You're looking at it live here from on the west side of I-35 at uh, Tecumseh Road is where that vortex in about 15, 20, 30 seconds is going to cross Interstate 35 on the northern edge of Max Westheimer Airport, not too far south of the old York plant. Uh, so a little way south of South Moore. It's going through North Norman. Go Mark Dillard. So yes, you are you are listening to our affiliate KFORI out of Oklahoma City, Dr. Forbes saying coming over I-35 right now near Tecumseh, exactly what you're seeing on the on the radar and the images are pretty dramatic here as the storm chaser follows this. He may actually be in the rotation of the tornado. Yeah, and I think what we're seeing here is very likely to be some combination of tornado, but maybe just this big broad rotation of the storm that we've seen this big rotating uh, storm cloud. To uh, I th or Rock Creek, rather, I'm trying to get over to I-35. We had uh, power flashes, and we've got uh, debris in the air, Mike. Uh, this is uh, wrapping up in rain very rapidly as well. Back to you. Okay, let's go to Emily Sutton here. Let's take Mark Dillard's stream. Keep Mark Dillard's stream. Let's go to Emily. Emily, what do you have? Hey, Mike, we're at the spur and I-35. You're looking to the north, and we have noted about three power flashes. It's challenging to see the tornado, but I can kind of make out the condensation funnel at times. So it's getting ready to cross I-35. Um, yeah, probably three power flashes. So we're watching it from a distance. We're high up, um, so we have a pretty good view of it, although I will say, folks, don't try and go out to look at it because it's going to be very challenging to see. Uh, but, yeah, definitely some defined power flashes. Uh, gearing up to cross I-35, so probably want to stay off. Emily, appreciate that. Hank Baker is at Robinson and I-35 looking at it as well. Hank, what do you have? Hey, Mike. Uh, I'm at I-35 in Robinson, and 
This is a. It looks like a really broad, wide circulation. I've get, I've got some vortices that have hit the ground and blowing shingles off of apartments, etc. In the uh, in having debris in the air. Uh, it's very visible right now. The back side of the circulation looks like it's still just to the west and fixing to cross I-35, even though I've had vortices already go across I-35. I'm at mile marker 111, and uh, it's rapidly rotating. It looks to me like it's moving almost due east. Mike, back to you. Hank, appreciate that. Here's Mark Dillard's stream live again. Tornado continues in Norman. It's in North Norman. It's about an F1, maybe a weak F2, and it, this is all still on the ground. Here's one side of it. The other side of it is right here, North Max Westheimer. It's crossing Interstate 35 literally right now. Power flashes. Mark Dillard's been in the tornado. He's still on the edge of it right now. Mark, tell us about it. So I think what we're seeing here is uh, uh, partly this very large rotation of the storm itself that is getting winds kind of over a broad area right down to the ground and occasionally has a tornado associated with that. There certainly is a very strong rotation uh, that is coming into the area right near I-35 right now, going to be heading across uh, toward the, uh, the, uh, this, this road that heads east. I believe it's the east, uh, an east turn there of I-35. So uh, let's go to the Gibson Ridge, Sarah, if we could. We'll take a look at some of, the, some of the details on this. Here's the high definition radar showing this big broad hook that is wrapping around. And I'll show you the velocities on this. Someone has taken control of it. I grab it back. Uh, very no, we don't have that. That's not what's showing up in my screen. So, not sure what I'm seeing here. Seeing a big broad hook echo that is. Uh, oh, this is the wrong uh, radar. I need uh, Gibson Ridge 48. I need 49. Okay, I need I uh, the other one. Doctor Forsberg, I see this po it. possible rotation going over. If you're familiar, this is the uh, the OU airport is right there, just on the east side of I-35. Uh, there's a big Target shopping center right in there, just north of Robinson. So this is, uh, you know, where a lot of people are probably familiar with this area. We've got uh, a lot of apartments here. We've got a lot of uh, a lot of traffic on I-35 in this particular this particular area. And what we're seeing here is very broad rotation, uh, not something that is. Uh, t totally tornadic, but there's a, a down in the south side of this rotation center, there's a big area of west winds that are coming eastbound. So I think uh, some of the damage that we're getting is associated with that. There's a big wide rotation right in this spot right in here would be where the tornado, an individual tornado would be located. So it's hard. To, sometimes there's a fine distinction between what's a tornado and what's the rotating storm. But in this case, I think we're getting a big wide area, maybe a couple miles wide of, of damage that's associated with a broad rotation that occasionally has small tornadoes embedded within that. And you can see uh, the live images there on the left-hand side of your screen from K4 Chopper. You mentioned this earlier, Dr. Forbes. You know, the, the width of the tornado doesn't always equate to strength. You can have very intense, tiny, narrow tornadoes, but you can also have big, large, weak tornadoes. Yeah, that's certainly the case. And... Uh, and you can have wind damage that's associated not necessarily with the tornado, but just with the thunderstorm's rotation, what we call the mesocyclone, or with the thunderstorm's rear flank downdraft that wraps around that mesocyclone on the, on the south side. I think today we're getting damage possibly from that mesocyclone as well as from that rear flank downdraft. I sort of see two surges uh, of winds on my Doppler radar. I'm not sure which direction the, the camera's actually pointed here. If he's actually looking back to the south and west here and the I-35 would be kind of down to the lower left of your screen there and it's not come across I-35 yet or it's actually already crossed I-35. It's hard to tell because I'm not exactly sure which way this camera is pointed. Radar image maybe a couple minutes so old. It's probably, I think so it's we're probably looking across, I, we're maybe looking off to the northeast here and uh, the storm has already passed I-35. Coming maybe very near the, uh, the airport there at OU, Max uh, Westheimer Airport. Well, the uh the issue is that with this storm possibly wrapped in rain, the rain, I believe, for sure has passed I-35, uh, but there's some possibility that the tornado itself hidden inside that rain may still be back uh, just a little bit to the west of I-35. So uh, there, there's some danger here. Uh, in this whole situation because I believe it has rain out ahead of where the tornado would be. So we're getting this big broad wind out in the leading edge of the rain, but then there could be a tornado that could still be hiding back in there and, and that still could cross I-35. The, you know, I, I look at what I look down at the ground of this, Dr. Forbes, it looks like we've got some rain down at the ground, but maybe a lot of 
uh, just rotating wind at the ground that's yes. translated down from the base of that wall cloud. Absolutely, and that's what we're the latest spotter report is saying, a rotating wall cloud observed. Uh, that was about uh, 10 minutes ago with the winds there that they estimated five miles west northwest of Norman uh, at about 70 miles per hour. So mm. the, uh, they were not uh, reporting that as a tornado. Uh, they were just reporting that as, uh, as strong winds. So I think we are occasionally getting brief tornadoes. We've got a brief tornado touchdown reported at 48th and Robinson, uh, but we're also getting this wider scale wind damage. Uh, it's a pretty scary picture if you look at that uh, picture right now. Let's see what we're seeing here. Cleveland County still under tornado warning. This goes until 6.30 local time. You're taking a live look as we dip into our affiliate coverage from KFOR. There's again the, the chopper view, Dr. Forbes. We're getting both views from the chopper as well as uh, storm chasers on the ground. And what do you see here? Well, right above our, where our tornado alert symbol comes up, there's some kind of an edge of something that goes from uh, lower right to upper left there. Uh, that could be a tornado that's embedded in the rain there. It's a little bit hard to see, but there's some, some kind of a, 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 an edge there. Do you see that, what more I'm talking about? White, uh, more of yeah. a white edge there. If it, you know, it could be a leaning hail shaft. It could also be a tornado. Hard to see from this vantage point, but we know that we have had a tornado at some point with this. We actually even think we saw it with the storm chaser who was in the circulation. The other thing that we're, so I'm s seeing something right about in here that's caught my eye. I'm it's very hard to tell, but I'm wonder, wondering if that's a big, wide tornado. Uh, the other thing that we're seeing here is uh, the bluish character of everything. With it, as we get toward late in the afternoon, this very heavy rain, this hail, often you see this blue-green coloration of a, of a tornado-worn type storm. And we certainly look there, the aquamarine color that we're seeing with this, uh, that's a pretty traditional or a pretty spectacular view mm. of this kind of a uh, coloration associated with a storm that uh, has a lot of hail associated with it. That makes me think that we're probably looking down to the southwest, the sun pulling through the rain, giving the, the rain gives the, the it takes on a blue color and a little bit of uh, green that is getting in because the sun late in the afternoon takes on a little bit of a yellowish color. So pretty spectacular aquamarine kind of coloration there. Yeah, well, large, maybe a tornado hiding in that. It's, it's definitely hard to see. So we're going to keep our eyes trained on this. You're looking at live chopper cam out of uh, Norman, Oklahoma. Cleveland County is under a tornado warning until 630 local time. The storm has just passed over potentially I-35 and we're watching it go very near the OU campus, the University of Oklahoma campus, maybe just slightly to the north of campus, somewhere near uh, maybe the airport there, the, uh, the airport into OU. It's, it's, it is hard to see, Dr. Forbes. It may certainly be rain wrapped in there. The, the wall cloud has been very distinct, but uh, if you see anything in there that looks like it could be a tornado from well, the video, what I'm it's hard seeing, to see. What I'm seeing mostly is that inside this little ball area here, I'm seeing about a 75 to 80 mile per hour rotation that is uh, kind of a broad rotation. It's, uh, uh, I'm working sort of offline here. Look, rotation is about uh, a mile and a half wide. So whether that's a big wide tornado or just the whole rotation of this storm's wall cloud that's worked its way down to the ground, that is uh, uh, debatable. We'll have to see, uh, they'll go out and look at the damage. But to me, the, the, the mesocyclone, the wall cloud rotation, and, and the winds at the ground from that are stronger than any kind of tornado circulation I'm seeing at this moment. We, there have been some times when those two velocities toward and away were touching each other, but now they're, they're separated apart. Okay, they've zoomed down in here a little bit to, uh, to the road and a little bit brighter white, so there might actually end up being a little bit of uh, a hail in that or it's being illuminated from the uh, southwest side by the sun just a little bit and it's making it a little bit brighter, but you know, could there potentially be something hidden in there? Absolutely. You know, we've had the reports of that, and there might be something just back to the left-hand side of your screen. Uh, but this is a pretty populated area, Dr. Forbes, really between Norman up through Oklahoma City. There's a lot of population here. Well, it really is, and, and part of the point of this is to have damage, you don't have to have a tornado. These 75, 80 mile per hour gusts that I'm seeing are certainly, that's hurricane force type gusts, so it's right. certainly capable of knocking down trees, knocking down power poles, causing power outages. And maybe, by the measurements I'm taking, could be in a mile and a half wide swath that's coming across this area. So there could be quite a bit of damage. There could be that 75 mile or 80 mile per hour wind gust will, will cause some roofing damage, knock down awnings, knock down uh, uh, billboards. 
Uh, and so there could be quite an extensive amount of damage with this, probably not the kind of damage, unless it gets to be a concentrated tornado, not the kind of damage that's going to destroy a home. Uh, mobile home is not a safe place to be not right now, all. though. Uh, you know, mobile homes can be rolled in as, in as low as 70 to 80 mile per hour winds, especially if they're not tied down. So you can see as he pulls out here, what a distinct shot of this uh, rotating mesocyclone. Yeah, and look at the motion. The motion of those clouds there are going from right to left. So I'm uh, trying to figure out... Uh, do we have a do we have an anticyclonic well, that's rotation here? Well, certainly what sh seems to be showing up there. I'm not. We may. Uh, yeah, it's when you get zoomed in like this, it's hard to tell. Uh, you know where the location of the shot is being taken from, but uh, it's very clear there. The right to left yeah, that may you be can inflow. See it might be yeah. rotating in this direction where a typical rotating mesocyclone would rotate counterclockwise. Look at this. There's a little bit of sun poking through there. You see a little bit of a white cloud. The gust front with the RFD kind of looking through the RFD on the I, south side, maybe? Yeah, I think we are looking that through. That may the, be the anticyclonic. Uh, there's right the wall cloud uh, there. So, uh, yeah, hard to, hard to tell we, exactly what we were looking at there, we but believe, the motion was pretty fast. We pretty believe fast. we're looking off to the northeast. We believe. And so, if there were a tornado to drop, it might truly be right in the center of your screen. Yeah, well, this you're point. definitely seeing here the. The, the, the wall cloud, the tail cloud coming in, and then this big wall cloud. There's the prevailing cloud base. So uh, the inflow is coming in. This cloud is, is rotating. Uh, and I believe at times some of the wind from that is coming down to the ground and could be causing damage across a mile and a half wide swath there. Scary sight. On the left-hand side of your screen, you've got uh, ground perspective here from the storm chasers here from K4. We know it's done some damage. We've already seen that in some communities back on the west side of I-35 as this storm has really held together since around uh, Anadarko and Chickasha yep. all the way across I-35 now through Norman. It's done a little bit of cycling of its, of its rotation centers. One made a left turn and um, forced the tornado warning that scared the people of Moore, but now the new uh, circulation is, is, is uh, definitely coming across the area south of Moore. It's coming into the area on the north side of Norman. Uh, possibly with some pretty widespread wind gusts that could exceed 70, 75 miles per hour. We're getting a really good look at this, Dr. Forbes, at least uh, visually and also on radar. It's pretty close to the radar site there it is. Uh, at Norman, so we get good look at the low-level rotation on it, but it may come almost right over the radar. Yeah, it's getting very close to the radar. The circulation has tightened up a little bit, uh, but still... Uh, it looks to be more of a storm scale rotation than a tornado scale rotation. The raw velocities uh, are that I'm seeing here at about 640 feet above the ground are about 75 miles per hour in this uh, south side of this rotating cloud. So uh, it wrapped in rain, so it's rain-driven winds as well, or yeah, no, wind-driven rain as well. I'm not sure the Circulation has crossed I-35. If you, if you look at either. the animation, it seems like it's going north, like it may be trying to occlude a little bit and cycle back north. I mean, it's still a strong rotation, but it's still it may on have actually 35 done a, or west it's of 35. Done another something. Kind of put on the brakes and, and actually made a bit of a left jog and right along I-35. We know we've had some damage with this. Uh, in Oklahoma County, we've had some damage. Tree fell on a car there. Uh, we've had some uh, damage in multiple areas uh, west of I-35, but uh, on the radar, Dr. Forbes, do you, do you see much of a concern for campus? For say, oh, there's a look at the damage, no, no, by the way, no, Oklahoma no. County campus, look, it's gonna go north yeah, of the OU is, campus. It is definitely, when we started uh, 20 minutes ago or so, this was definitely headed for Norman, right toward Robinson Street. It has definitely taken a left turn and is now going north so maybe I was a little bit premature of talking about Moore because this storm, the, the first storm was cycling and headed toward Moore. This next rotation is cycling and at least heading toward the southeast side of Moore. So a dangerous, uh, again, becoming a bit unpredictable. There's the rotation that we're seeing right now. It is, uh, ha has gone like this and now is heading more north toward the north northeast. There you can see it right there. And step it forward again, Sarah. Uh, there it comes along here. I've got it pretty... Pretty close by from memory. It is uh, it is definitely made a left turn instead of going right toward Norman. It is coming off to the southeast side of Moore, and it probably would head toward uh, southeast 149th Street there, south and east of Moore. All right, so we're watching the live pictures here on the left-hand side of your screen. Dr. Forbes' radar analysis on the right-hand side of your screen. 
When you look at some, some of these hail shafts, Dr. Forbes, uh, some of these rain shafts even, you know, we're talking even maybe some, some strong downward motion out of the storm and then it translates into kind of a horizontal. Once it hits the ground, it can't go through the ground, so then it has to spread out horizontally. And that can be damaging in itself. That's exactly right. And at times, that's what I've been talking about of, of having probably a 75, maybe 80 mile per hour gust. So what looks like right in the middle of your screen what to the conventional eye may look like a tornado is not likely a tornado. That's likely just a rain shaft right there. It looks right like there. a rain shaft. Yeah, that's, uh, I do not believe in that, especially in that kind of a location where you've got this flat cloud, a gust front shelf cloud look to it going from uh, lower left to upper right. That would not be the, the place where you would typically be right. seeing the, the tornado come down. So that it seems to be a, a rain shaft. There may be a, a little flanking storm that is formed there that is uh, giving the, the hail and rain that is coming down prefer preferably at that location with sort of rain-free areas farther to the left and right. When you, when you analyze this on the radar, we had that distinct arm sticking down, that appendage yeah. on the south side of the storm. It looks like that's wrapped up more into the, the meat of the storm itself. And so could we be looking at another cycling here where it's kind of waning just a bit now? There may be an opportunity for it to wrap back up again and produce another tornado, which it's done through its history. Yeah, that certainly looks like it could be the case, and that would take the uh, new tornado right toward the radar and then perhaps off toward uh, the area north of Bethel Acres, where you and I witnessed the tornado back on May 10th, uh, 2010. Right, and they had another tornado there in uh, 2013. That was uh, the day before the infamous El Reno tornado. Um, this is not the only thing we're following, though. There are actually multiple tornado warnings across Kansas as well. We've had uh, large tornadoes reported around Republic. So this is uh, not just uh, central Oklahoma. It's all up and down Tornado Alley, by the way. We've got multiple tornado watches from Nebraska back down through Texas. But this is the one that we're focused on because it's infecting a, a pretty large metropolitan area just south of uh, Oklahoma City. We've got some, we got some damage, uh, say that again for me, we got some hotel heavily damaged. Where's that? Is that in Norman? We're getting reports now. Okay, there we go. There's a look at a hotel. Where is this? This is, uh, gosh, this might be right along I-35. I think so. This, gosh, this looks like it might be the old Holiday Inn. The Norman Hotel, okay. Uh, but you can see it's sustained some damage there. Part of the facade there on the one side has come off. Dr. Forbes might have some insulation, yeah. maybe some broken windows. Probably some, probably some broken windows. There's a bunch of debris that's uh, laying in the field close to, close, or, or the parking lot closer to us. So that's probably debris that's there's probably been some roof damage as well. You see that the left side, some facade, some of the wall is cut. I-35 yeah. and uh, Robinson is where that is. Uh, so if you're familiar with the area, sense it's exactly what we saw on the radar that exact location where the uh, stronger rotation was coming through there could have even been maybe just some strong winds uh, laid down by the storm and maybe not even a tornado but uh, you know multiple people on the ground have, have reported at least at some point uh, at least a condensation right funnel there. that was it this location here on the radar that's uh, about where we're looking with that damage and so here was where the, the circulation was coming the strong rotation there coming across Robinson Road right toward that location. I should also point out the rotation has really increased again, yeah, more tornado-like in this storm at this time, in a location about two and a half miles southeast of downtown of the center of Moore, uh, has, uh, instead of being that broad rotation, one that looks more now like a tornado rotation again. So it is hiding inside of, there it is, right in there. It's mm -hmm. hiding, it's right at the north edge of the tornado warning as this storm has made that left turn. And so uh, it is going to be heading off toward the north and east, toward the east side of Moore if it holds together. And it certainly so far is holding together and it's definitely rain wrapped. Uh, dangerous situation heading up toward uh, the uh, uh, NOAA and Drive and Highway 77H. Area. There's a new tornado warning coming out from Moore and Tinker Air Force Base. Uh, yeah, that's what we were just talking about, that it's t taking a left turn and instead of weakening, it is uh, when it makes a left turn right now, it is a strengthening. So uh, we've got, we've had a history of tornadoes in Moore. It's one of the most prone areas for tornadoes yeah. right here in central Oklahoma. We had the big tornado a couple of years ago, the EF5 that came through there, Dr. Forbes. You witnessed that firsthand yep. and the damage afterwards and we're able to distinctly p point out some uh, EF5 damage. I uh, want to reset for you folks and let you know what's going on. We've got uh, multiple tornado warnings across multiple states. What we're dealing with right now is a tornado warning um, in Kansas, we've got tornado warnings up in Nebraska, tornado warnings in central Oklahoma, and uh, strong storms that go all the way down through 
Texas, some of the storms that we're most focused on right now are coming very near Moore, Oklahoma, just south of Oklahoma City. This uh, tornado, the storm has produced tornadoes multiple times along its track. So let's take you up toward Nebraska first and show you some of the storms up to the north here, and then we'll slide back down to the south. We've got tornado warnings here for Thayer County, Hebron, uh, next in line to be hit by this storm. This is just across the Kansas state line, by the way. Uh, that goes until 6.30 this evening, there's, so if you live in Hebron, there's a definitive hook echo in there. And there's been tornado sighted with this storm near Chester, so th this is really a strong-looking storm uh, with a, a tornado on it. There's the uh, storm relative velocity where you see the inbound and outbound winds, green and red, right next to each other. Very distinct there on the Doppler radar. It detects more than just precipitation. It det also detects the wind and the rotation within the storm, and so it's very obvious there on the radar what we're looking at. That came past uh, Republic, where they did report a large tornado on the ground, right? In near Republic, Sarah, yes, right? Yes, there's been mm -hmm. at least... Uh, yeah, there have been uh, multiples up there. Multiples. So then coming across uh, Chester now and up toward uh, Hebron looks to be next. We put the... At least the five track. reports of tornadoes uh, let's just, sightings let's the, with this storm. Let's put the timeline for Hebron on there if we can and uh, figure out what we're, what we're seeing for Hebron and the time before it gets there. It won't be long, that's for sure. The, uh, the hook echo is very close to Hebron. Uh, right now, so it's, uh, there's the tracker. At the moment, it's six miles away from Hebron or less, so okay, it's very so, close. All right, 627, so you've got about eight minutes. You don't have much time. You've got to get to some shelter as quickly as you can. Then Belvedere, around 640 uh, local time, so that'll be about 20 minutes away. Uh, lowest level of your home, basement, storm shelter, best place to be if you have one. If not, uh, definitely another better option for you could be an interior room, uh, closet, bathroom, a place with no windows, uh, find something to cover your head with. If you have a bike helmet or something like that, get in there, put the kids in there, put them in the bathtub, cover your head, and just ride this one out until the danger passes. But it won't be long before a Hebron may be hit by this, Dr. Forbes. Absolutely, and that is a very strong rotation and a very open area. Unlike the storm that's coming toward Oklahoma City that has a lot of rain around it, it looks like the storm that is coming up toward Hebron, Nebraska there, has a lot of un, uh, uninterrupted inflow coming in from the south and east of that storm that will allow it to continue. All right, let's take you down to uh, Jewel and Mitchell counties here. Uh, this is also in Kansas now. This is uh, near the town of Jewel. We've had strong storms that have come past Mankato earlier today, and now this one could be headed over toward the Cortland area. There's the, uh, there's the Doppler velocities on this. There is some rotation within this as well, maybe coming near Buffalo and Vicksburg. That tornado warning goes until that tornado warning goes until 6:45 local time. Jewel and Mitchell County. This is in Kansas. There's the uh, timeline for you. Cortland about 6:43 in Formosa, about 6:38. So uh, get into your safe place, your shelter. Get into your uh, interior rooms. Don't don't uh, be out there looking for these. Sometimes you just may not be able to see them. You don't want visual confirmation before you take a shelter because that may be too late. And and this one to me is looking like another one of these storms that could be rain wrapped around the Randall area, heading back up toward the Republic area, uh, almost following on the path of this previous storm that now is up in Nebraska. So a dangerous situation there. All right, so let's follow those a little bit farther south. We go outside of Beatrice, uh, Nebraska, down toward Concordia. Those are those storms. Then back towards Salina, Hutchinson, north of Wichita. The storm west side of Wichita had a report of a tornado on that as well. And the uh, pictures on the left-hand side of your screen are live chopper cam from Norman, Oklahoma. So let's follow them back down into central Oklahoma and show you what's happening down here around uh, Moore, Oklahoma and uh, Oklahoma City. Uh, Moore, as we all know, has been hit multiple times by very large, oh. violent EF5 tornadoes. We've got two circulations down there on that. And this, uh, take a look at the, my radar if you want to do Max 8 again. Let's go over to Max 8. We've got two circulations and there. And show you what we've got going on there. Yeah, the storm, uh, this is go. the storm that's coming into the Norman area. It has uh, also begun to do one of these cyclings. With We've shown you this one that's been turning farther to the north and now uh, leapfrogging it out farther to the east out around uh, southeast 149th Street there and east of Highway 77H uh, has been a new circulation has formed. So uh, this storm also is uh, cycling uh, with uh, some leapfrogging. The, the storm to the west, there's the, the original storm circulation. It is wrapped in rain. The new circulation is forming out in this area uh, where the, the rain cooled air has wrapped around. We have the warm air that is coming in here and that's uh, the way that new rotations form in these storms. Once uh, rain wraps around and chokes off the original, it uh, 
out on the leading edge of where the rain is interacting with the warm air, it often reforms the new circulation. This will be number three of the cycling supercell that's coming toward the Norman area. We've seen that happen before, the exact same yep. thing that you talked about before. It's coming very close to the radar now. Cleveland and Oklahoma counties, they've extended that warning off to the east now. That goes until 645, that tornado warning. And now it looks like it's sliding just to the east of the town of Moore. Yeah, the circulation, the tornado is right in there. And so that is going up toward Highway 240. Uh, and may even turn a little bit more toward the north and east than that, Sarah. So we might okay. want to uh, make it go due northeast. Dr. Forbes, the one thing that's a little concerning right now is that, that we've probably got a lot of people on the roads. Uh, this is happening kind of the tail, yes. end of, tail end of rush hour here. But a lot of, uh, a lot of businesses will, will let their employees out early. And then, then next thing you know, you've got a big traffic jam on the roads at a time when you don't need the people on the roads. So there's a lot of danger out there, blinding rain, some hail, and we could have some rotation in this storm that could be popping down some brief tornadoes. Yeah, this is going to uh, very well, the, the old circulation that's uh, now about two and a half miles south and east of downtown Moore could very well head up toward, if it holds together, I think it'll weaken, but could head up to the area just south and east of Midwest City whereas it, it definitely has a, a new circulation that's, that's farther off to the east, and that one is probably going to head toward the McLeod area. All right, you can distinctly see the two rotations on the screen there. We'll circle them for you. Uh, so we could have twin rotations coming basically east-northeast uh, through the east side of Moore and could be coming very near I-240 and maybe near I-40 as well. Yeah, very dangerous, very complicated situation. Look how the arm spirals around this one. So at times we saw this... Um, this line of clouds wrapping around that may be uh, what this looks like at this point uh, we're again looking at uh, uh, the uh, the situation there uh, with again this big wall of rain with with clouds that are out closer to us and above up at the top of the screen there uh, that are out on the edge of this so predominantly seems to be sort of shelf cloud along the outflow rather than uh, rotation but hiding inside that, once again, there could be a tornado uh, inside of this particular uh, uh, circulation that okay. we just cannot see. All right, Dr. Forbes, check this out. Now we're looking uh, west side of Wichita. This is in the town of Sedgwick, Kansas, getting these new images in now live of damage here. Uh, what do you make of this? Uh, definitely, this was a tornado a storm that went through there. It's hit a, uh, uh, apparently a, a mobile home type structure. Or, that uh, one there's been that flattened. One is flattened. Uh, they'll uh, probably this will probably uh, rate an EF2 uh, type of rating, I would guess. They'll, they'll have to assess how well uh, sturdy the structure was. There's a reporter live. Let, let's take a listen right now to our affiliate KSNW. A quick question. I was wondering, uh, er, is there any other homes in that area, or is it just those couple of homes? Is it pretty isolated out there? Just wonder if that storm might have done some damage to some other homes in that area. Yeah, you know, guys, when I was driving in, uh, I, I didn't see a whole lot of damage at all, just a, a little bit of farm equipment, um, some trees blowing over. It seems like this is a pretty isolated incident and seems to be the only home uh, that is damaged in this nearby kind of circumference here. Okay. okay, it still looks fairly windy out there. I feel for those folks that coming is, uh, home to that. That is KSNW TV, our NBC affiliate there in uh, Wichita. Dr. Forge, you look at some of that damage, these trees that are uprooted, mobile homes yeah. that have been flattened. But what we saw with earlier tornadoes in Kansas is they had multiple vortices in them. Yep. And as the reporter was mentioning, it's the only home that he's yeah. witnessed that's damaged. You could have a large circulation, but you could also have, is this live? This is, so this is from earlier. Around a, around a tornado, you can have small vortices within that that actually are stronger and can do very pinpointed damage like what that reporter was seeing. Pretty well-defined tornado there, a big uh, cylindrical type uh, stovepipe type tornado. All right, so we've got multiple threats that we're watching for you this evening from Nebraska to Kansas, down through Oklahoma. Uh, we've really been focused on this storm in central Oklahoma near more south of Oklahoma City. Uh, Dr. Forbes, you believe it's cycling here. It's put down a couple of tornadoes. It's done some damage. It's crossed I-35, potentially going now toward uh, I-240 and I-40. You know, sliding maybe just to the southeast of Oklahoma City right now. Yeah, indeed. And both of the, in the last five minutes, both of those circulations, the old one and the new one that had formed, have weakened considerably. So that's certainly some good news. They, 
as we're beginning to see this big broad area here of uh, rain cooled air that has surged forward and it's choked off the uh, the inflow there's there's no longer any inflow notch there it has choked it off now that said farther to the south and east and close to the radar we could get yet another cycling of this but this last one uh, seems to uh, the, the whole storm has become uh, perhaps downdraft dominant uh, outflow dominant and has become a high precipitation supercell with a lot of heavy rain that's very very close and wrapping around the updraft one thing that becomes a disadvantage sometimes though when you get too close to the radar you get this cone of silence where you don't get a lot yep. of good detailed information where you need it close to the ground. So maybe a brief period where this goes close to the radar, we don't get the kind of detail we'd like to see. Yeah, this uh, looks like it's going to uh, get to a location here that's probably going to come within two miles of the of the Twin Lakes radar, the, the National Weather Service radar for the Norman, Oklahoma City metro area. All right, so this is the storm that we're following for you with tornado warnings in Cleveland and Oklahoma counties until 645 and trained on this chopper uh, video for a while now. You can see we've got a big rain shaft coming out of that storm. We have multiple other threats, though, and uh, can we take them up to uh, Kansas? Or we can we take them yeah. up to Hebron? Yeah. Let's uh, go up to Kansas and up to Nebraska and show you the storms here because they've got uh, very big rotations on them. There are multiple reports of tornadoes. So we're going to take you up there and show you what's going on farther north. And we'll get back to the Oklahoma ones here in just in a little bit. We'll keep up the Oklahoma picture here and we'll keep monitoring that. But Dr. Forbes, we go up here just across the Kansas yeah. state line into Nebraska. Uh, this is a big storm coming near Hebron. Yeah, you can see the hook echo wrapping around very well defined. Kind of like what we're seeing there in the Norman area, except in this case, we have a big area of inflow. So this storm is still very healthy, not uh, outflow dominated. And with a tornado that's sitting right in there, going to get very close to and probably just ever so slightly to the east side. But within a mile of uh, downtown Hebron, there you can see uh, the, the strong rotation that's, that's showing up with that. All right, so those those storms pushing off to the uh, north, north northeast here. Yeah. So Thayer County tornado warning until seven o'clock. So the top of the hour, another half an hour here. Pretty distinct rotation here, right along Highway 81 Power. and 136. Coming up next, maybe coming right between Bruning and Alexandria, or maybe even taking a little bit of a right jog now, uh, Dr. Forbes. Spotter, so Spotter reporting uh, about eight minutes ago. Tornado on the still on the ground. Power flash is reported across Highway 81. This was about three miles south southwest of Hebron. So uh, now it is uh, heading off to the area just to the east of uh, Hebron uh, and very close. Yeah, we put the tracker on there for you. Belvedere 6:35. So you get about five minutes to take shelter here. Ohio and then Glengarry 6:57 and 7:07, falling right through the track that we laid down there. Yeah, very dangerous, the storm there with a history of producing tornadoes. Look at the tornado reports that we've got here. All the red dots on your screen there, the, the one there just south of Hebron. Uh, power flashes reported, tornado across Highway 81. And again, that may be now going over yeah. 136. Tornado south of that remains on the ground. That was near Chester. So it's the same tornado, uh, just has gone farther north here. Yeah, and, and I should also point out that there's additional reports farther down to the south there. There you're, you're seeing a, another one. So this, uh, this Same particular storm say, has had a long history. Yeah. Here, right? And then yeah. there's been other storms uh, that were off farther to the west. And, and to some extent, some of the uh, rain from that uh, storm that's near Hebron interfered with some of the storms farther west. And so they were not as long lived. Uh, uh, relayed by emergency manager tornado as well. And uh, when the pictures that you're seeing there, by the way, storm near Moore, Oklahoma, south of uh, Oklahoma City. Been watching those one very closely from the chopper cam from a K4 TV there in Oklahoma City. And it has t it has put down some tornadoes. Uh there's been a gust reported, a measured gust to two miles northwest of, uh, of Norman, uh, 58 miles per hour from that uh, particular storm. There's going to be a new tornado warning coming for near Verdun, and there it is. Verdun was hit earlier, I believe. Uh, yes. So now we've got it now Serena. for uh, Caddo County, Canadian Back. County, Grady County. It's a new tornado. This is this coming is over the, the area. similar areas that yep. got hit just about two hours ago, Dr. Forbes. Yeah, this is back farther down in uh, on the heels of the storm that right now is very close to Norman. This is farther to the southwest, back in the area near Anadarko and Chickasha. The Verdant area was certainly one that we mentioned many times. Uh, we were getting, and you can see here the rotation that's showing up, the greens and the reds uh, that are heading off toward the north side of Verdant, but about ready to cross North 20, 227 50th Road there.
All right, so that storm uh, has got a tornado warning until 7 o'clock local time. So we've got multiple threats now in central Oklahoma. The very distinct hook echo on that. You can point it out clearly here near Verdun right now. And we've got a lot of potential hail now. When the uh, scan goes through, you see a more of a magenta color where we've got the dark oranges in there. You could be looking for some large hail that could be coming near Amber and Minko. We'll put the tracker on this and time it out for you. In uh, Puckaset here, about 646 is when the... Uh, Potential tornado could come for you, 657 and sooner, and 706 uh, near Tuttle. So all these places have experienced the severe weather already today, not getting hit with a second round. What do you notice on the high-definition radar? Well, what I was doing was, and oh, and there Sarah has done it for us. I was just doing something similar to show the two storms and put them in perspective relative to each other, that uh, the Norman storm... Uh, albeit it may be somewhat truncated because it's so close to the radar, but it seems to be a little bit smaller, you know, in total tornado coverage. Tornado on the ground, northeast of Verdun now. Tornado yeah. with the tornado southern, tornado on the ground uh, southwestern now. of the two storms near the Verdun area. So it looks like the one near Moore uh, may have weakened somewhat, and the one back to the southwest now has strengthened and reports now tornado on the ground northeast of Verdun. Yeah, a very definite uh, uh, circulation there. Of course, our radar, the, we get scans every two and a half or sometimes five minutes apart, so the storm could have moved uh, off to the northeast side now, Verdon, in that uh, elapsed time period. We it, had uh, earlier today, and we, we've got the video we can show you of the, uh, the previous tornado that we had here in uh, Caddo County, Dr. Forbes. This was uh, earlier today from the same supercell that we've been watching going now yep. across I-35. So this is what these storms can do, and this is uh, very close to the area where we've got the tornado warning again. Yeah, and sometimes, and we've seen the rain-cooled air or the rain from the, the lead storm, the one that's near Norman right now, uh, that could have put out a boundary that uh, gives a, a little bit of extra convergence of the, uh, of the winds a little bit of a temperature contrast and sometimes the succeeding storm the following storm can run along that and and give it the kind of wind shift right down at the ground that it needs to focus and develop a tornado so we could again we could have a long lived kind of tornado event that could follow out of this storm coming now back again toward the amber the tuttle areas uh, on the heels of the first one which is which is something we haven't seen with the storms uh, so far today a lot of them have been brief tornado yes. touchdowns none of them have been long lived strong storms that have stayed on the ground for miles and miles they've generally been down for a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds and then lifted but uh, now a new danger near anadarko it is just to the east of anadarko oklahoma and pushing off to the uh, north and east so if you live around tuttle that storm is going to be there in less than 15 minutes so you've got a little bit of time if you're watching us right now, grab the kids, grab the pets, get into your safe room, protect your head, uh, dive under a big sturdy piece of furniture, take your cell phone with you and monitor the conditions until all is clear as